Sex workers are uniting. Women from across the UK are fighting to defend the sex industry. Nobody, no, They're taking to the streets, unionising and forming collectives to make their working lives safer and better. We're so empowered, we own it. But they face opposition from feminist groups who want the industry shut down for good. It is not okay to sexualise and objectify women in this way. As strip clubs close across the UK, online sex workers say they're under pressure too. There's a lot worse things on the internet than me in my underwear. They say it's about being heard, about choosing what they do, about the right to be a sex worker. Save our strip club! This protest was organised by sex workers and their supporters. It's happening a few hours north of London in Sheffield. The protesters say it's become the key battleground in the fight to be a sex worker. They're campaigning to stop the city's only remaining strip club from closing. So we're now walking through the centre of Sheffield and all around there's people watching the protest wondering what the hell's going on really. They're not just fighting to save the strip club. It's also about challenging negative views of women who strip and why they choose to do it. We're really hard-working, independent, strong, charismatic, sexy women. We're fighting to break the glass ceiling and uh, end the social stigma around sex work and stripping. Because I have to care for my dad and obviously I can't, I can't work during the day because that's when I need to care for him. So when I put him to bed at night, that's when I can come to work. Movements like Me Too have started a discussion about women's bodies and harassment in the workplace. But some sex workers say they're being sidelined from that conversation. There's been a tension for a while now between some feminists and some of those working in the sex industry and it's really pronounced here in Sheffield. I went to meet Rachel. She lives in Sheffield, strips at the club and is one of the leaders of the campaign to save it. So these groups that are trying to kind of stop licences yeah. being granted, what would you say to them? I would say, um, please put your time and efforts into somewhere or someone that really needs your help. They'd argue yeah. that they are helping women, that there are some women that need help. Yeah, definitely. There are a ton of other things that they, where they could help people. I'm making a life for myself, having the time of my life. Let us do our job and focus your energies on people that really need your help. There's this big assumption that strippers especially are forced into it. They're druggies, they're, they're being objectified, they're, they're demeaned, they're victims. We're so empowered. We're like a team of firefoxes strutting our stuff in our shoes. We own it. I'm proud of who I am. And if I have the confidence and the courage to use my body, then why should anybody have the right to take that choice away from me? For people like Rachel, this is about the right to choose what you do for a living. But the feminist groups trying to shut the clubs don't believe stripping is a choice at all. We're about to go and meet someone who the protesters and the dancers are trying to appeal to. It's somebody on the other side of the debate that wants to close strip clubs for good. The Women's Equality Party fights for women's rights in the UK and has set its sights on strip clubs. Charlotte Mead is the party rep in Sheffield. Your party stands for empowering women and some of the dancers we spoke to said that that's exactly what stripping does for them. It empowers them and you're going to take that away from them. I appreciate that they, they say that they are choosing to do that at the moment but also it's not just about them, it's about as a society what we're saying about what we think is okay. What would you say to the dancers that say it's, it's my body, it's my choice, we can earn more in one day than we used to earn in a whole month when we were working a nine to five job? The root for women out of poverty is not for us to, for society to sexualise and objectify them. We need to look at the bigger picture and look at why there are not um, good jobs for women. Why do me or you or anyone get to set the rules on what's okay? For we set women? rules as a society all the time. We set rules as a society all the time. There may be some women who um, who want to do that work and enjoy that work, but those will be the tiny percentage of women who are there. And the sex industry as a whole is full of women who do not have very many choices. For dancers, the options of where to work are shrinking. In the last 10 years, strip clubs across the UK have been closing at a rapid pace. Experts estimate there were around 350 in England and Wales a decade ago. Now, there's only thought to be around 150. The closures started after local governments were given new powers to control the clubs in 2009. 
Those rules meant a club needed a special licence to operate, which has to be renewed every year. This has put pressure on dancers, but it also means some have started working together, like in this strippers collective in East London. It's a grassroots organisation supporting dancers to find different ways to earn money. They organise a life drawing class. Today's session is run by founding member Cheeky. I love what I do and my idea will be to improve the working conditions of what we have, not to completely shut it down because a lot of work and a lot of employment depends on it. Uh, for me, being a feminist is to support women no matter what. So if for whatever reason that life put you in this path to make your money, then you'll have your reasons. It's about not judging because life is tough as it is. Like who am I to judge you and who are you to judge me? Like we all have very different paths in life. In 2018, United Voices of the World set up a trade union branch for sex workers currently the only one in the UK. It provides support and protection for its members in what can be a precarious job and a dangerous industry. Samantha used to strip in clubs and pubs as a student. She wishes there'd been a union to help protect dancers from trouble at work when she was stripping. Had I had a union on my side when one of the bouncers at the club was harassing the girls, me included, I wouldn't have waited so long to say something. If nothing else, people involved in the girls will have far more financial and legal literacy in order to protect themselves at work. And even if the clubs don't change how they behave, the girls can at least bring the power of a union behind them if they're being mistreated. It's not just on the high street that sex workers feel their livelihoods are being threatened in the UK. Many are feeling the pressure online too. These members of the Sex Workers Union are protesting outside the Instagram HQ in London. They accuse Instagram of deactivating their accounts and discriminating against them because of their work. We're being deactivated for things that celebrities routinely post and get away with. So the double standard is seriously unfair. It's not discriminating against people because of their work and because of what they do. My work is no different to yours, it's no different to anyone's. It, the female body is not offensive in the slightest. An Instagram spokesperson told us their staff review millions of pictures every week. They said nudity or sexual solicitation isn't allowed on Instagram and that they aim to be sensitive to what's appropriate for their wider community, particularly younger users. The women outside Instagram and the women on the streets in Sheffield say this is a fight for acceptance. They're tired of being marginalised, want to defend their livelihoods and improve the industry from within. But the question is, does the rest of society want that as well? Thank you very much, Angle Park.